Hi everyone. This lesson is about hard to pronounce foods. Have you ever had that embarrassing situation in a restaurant when you want to order something and the waiter comes and you just sort of whisper it quietly or point at the food because you have no idea how to pronounce it? Or I guess some people just don't order that thing because they don't know how to say it. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the British English pronunciations of those words and also if you're learning something about IPA or pronunciation in general, this lesson will be useful for you. So let's start with staple foods. Staple foods are foods that you eat regularly and provide you with a lot of your energy requirements. These are not regularly eaten foods in England. They're not, they're not staple foods for most people, but in other countries of the world, they're regularly eaten. First one, quinoa. This word has two pronunciations. Some people say quinoa, other people say quinoa, quinoa. Moving on, next we have couscous, couscous. And we have bulgur, bulgur. Sauces and dips. Here is an English food that's hard to pronounce, even among English people. And we say Worcestershire, Worcestershire. We try to say Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce. But because it's a bit of a mouthful, that pronunciation, there is a shorter way to say it, which is, which is just Worcester, Worcester sauce. Next one, tzatziki, tzatziki. Hard for me to pronounce because this kind of pronunciation with the T next to the S isn't common in the English language. Tzatziki. Next we have taramasalata. So many syllables in that one. Let's have a look at the IPA transcription of the word because this helps us understand the sounds in that word more precisely. If you look here, I've spelt it with all these syllables ending in the letter A. ta ra ma sa la ta But actually, there are quite a few schwa sounds in this word and the schwa sound changes the sound of the A. So we get taramasalata, unstressed, 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 unstressed. Taramasalata. I just want to add something about the orange and red columns. The orange column is the sound of the word written out in the easiest way that everybody can understand. And the red column is for people who know and understand IPA, which is a way to more precisely write down the sounds of words. The problem with this is that not everybody understands. And the problem with this is it's not very exact in all cases. So if we look at the word Tara Masalata, it doesn't sound like that when we say it. It sounds like Tara Masalata. And that's because of the schwas in the word. But we can't write the unstressed sounds in our normal writing like this. The next word we have is guacamole. I'm saying that in the British pronunciation, guacamole. Whereas Americans have kept or have, maybe not kept, maybe have absorbed more of the Mexican influence. So they pronounce it in a different way. We say guacamole, they say guacamole. But in England, this is a much more common pronunciation that you'll hear people say. We haven't really been eating so much South American food here in England for that long, I would say. I would say the last eight years, the last 10 years, the last 10 years before it started to get more popular. But I think in North America, they've been eating it a lot longer and a lot more of it so they can pronounce it more authentically. The next one is Barba ganoush. Barba ganoush. Here again, 
we have the issue where the way that I'm writing this word in the simple to understand characters doesn't show us that we have a slightly, we have a different sound here. This is barbaganoush, barbaganoush. Now moving on to the salad course, can I tempt you with a hard to pronounce salad? Let's start over here with taboule, taboule. Next, this is the French pronunciation of this word. We might find this pronunciation in the menu of a fancy restaurant rather than say the English pronunciation. This one is salade niçoise, salade niçoise. In this word, we're not saying salad. The second syllable is lard, sounds longer. This is the French pronunciation. The next, the next salad we have is Waldorf. Wall is in, in your garden, wall or in your house. Waldorf, Waldorf salad. Compare the French pronunciation of salade to the English pronunciation of salad. And the last salad on our menu of hard to pronounce salads is caprese, caprese. Next we have pantry foods. These are foods that you keep in your, in your cupboard and you cook with them. And because these are unusual foods, these are ones that we would see on a restaurant menu in specific dishes. Let's start here with aubergine, aubergine. You might not recognize this word, especially if you're an American, because you call this one eggplant. But over here in England, we, we say aubergine. What stands out about the pronunciation of this word is it has a z, z. This is not a very common sound in English. It's also in the next word, courgette, courgette, courgette. It sounds close to a J, but it's not a J. Courgette, courgette, aubergine, aubergine, courgette. The next vegetable is a very unusual looking vegetable. It's long and it's purple and green. And in England, that vegetable tends to be eaten as a dessert called rhubarb and custard. Rhubarb, rhubarb. This word is interesting because it has two long vowels in it. Rhubarb, barb ooh-ah, rhubarb. Next, we have a vegetable that you might not have heard of before and a vegetable that could possibly not be available in your country. This vegetable was, and maybe still is, fashionable to eat in restaurants over here in England. And we say celeriac, celeriac. Let's look at the pronunciation more closely. When I write it here, I cannot write in a precise way how we really say this word. Because here, in this syllable, we have an air. This is a diphthong where two vowel sounds are together in one sound. But I don't know how to write that. Can't do it. So how this actually sounds is celeriac. Lair, lair, celeriac. Moving on to the Japanese. What are they, bean? Japanese bean? In our list, we have edamame, edamame. And finally, we have lychee, lychee. Now we have French and Italian hard to pronounce food, starting with quiche, 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 sh, sh. Next, this is a hard one to say, 
cause de oeuvre. How do we say that one? Actually, this one is pronounced or d'oeuvre, or d'oeuvre, or d'oeuvre, or d'oeuvre. Brioche, brioche, brioche. Again, ending with a sh sound, brioche. Next, we have a dessert, meringue, meringue. This word ends with a ng, meringue, meringue. And next, we have a potato dish called potato dauphinoise. Dauphinoise. There are two stresses in this word. The main stress has two lines under it. Dauphinoise. Moving on to Italian words. Many, oh, I'll go this way. Many, many people struggle with this one. How do we say it? We say, Bruschetta, bruschetta. Let's look at the IPA. Bruschetta, bruschetta. Let me know any Italians in the comments section how I did pronouncing this. Moving on, we have gnocchi, gnocchi. If we look, if we look here, can you hear that the N joins very quickly with the, the with the y sound. Gnocchi, gnocchi. That's not a common sound in English, so it's quite hard for us to pronounce in the Italian way. Many, many people will just say gnocchi, gnocchi. But if you think about it, it doesn't sound as delicious. It doesn't really sound like a food you'd want to eat. But it does when we add in that y sound. Gnocchi, gnocchi. Next, we have tagliatelle, tagliatelle. And looking at the IPA on this side, tagliatelle, tagliatelle. Something to note here about IPA transcription is that at the end of a word, what would ordinarily be a long vowel, E, written with two dots, at the end of a word, we often leave off those two dots because so it's the same vowel, but there's a subtle difference in length. And because it's at the end of the word, we don't give it as long to say it. So that's why at the end of this word, I haven't written the two, the two extra dots on the E sound. Tagliatelle. And finally, I included this one in our lesson today because I really like this flavour ice cream, but I never ever had any idea how to say it. So I always said something like, I'll have a, a cone of stracciatella. And I was always embarrassed and tried to hide how I was saying it. But for today's lesson, I found out how to say it and it's stracciatella, stracciatella, stracciatella. Ch, ch, stracciatella. And finally, we have Mexican food. You were expecting Mexican food, well, it's actually South American food. Starting with, starting with ceviche, ceviche. This one is a Peruvian dish, so I've included it. No offense, I said that it was all Mexican food. It's actually more broadly South American. When I've Written this one in easy to understand characters, I've written ceviche, but the first syllable has a schwa and instead sounds like se. Ceviche, ceviche, our stress is in the middle of the word. Next we have this one, we say quesadillas, quesadillas. Two stresses in this word, main stress for D, quesadillas. Next, we have enchiladas, enchiladas. Our main stress is the la, and we also have a stress at the beginning, but it's not as strong. Enchiladas. And our final word here, 
tortillas, where are they from? Are they Mexican? Are they Spanish? Spanish? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do they eat them all over South America? Let me know in the comments if you are the authority on that. We say tortillas, tortillas, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, tortillas. So there you go. They're the hard to pronounce foods. Thank you for watching and give me a thumbs up. Th th thumbs up if you like the lesson. Bye. Guacamole. Guacamole.